can find that for me now. And your receipt. Okay, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. We'll see you next time now. Absolutely. Take care. I gotta put the watches out really quick. Wrist check. I'm wearing a Rolex uh, Sea Dweller. It's an older watch. And this is actually not my watch, it's a customer's watch wearing it with his permission. I've worn it for like the last week. Um, but we gotta do a service on it. He wanted me to, to wear it to see how it runs. And now he just approved the service or so we're gonna get the service, but I'm still gonna enjoy it today. Wow, what a wonderful watch. Look at it. Ain't that beautiful? This Rolex President. Oh my goodness, it's just fantastic, isn't it? But wait, is it a real Rolex? Nope, it's a fake Rolex. And this, something like this, we can spot from, you know, a few feet away. But like to the untrained eye, you really can get taken for something like that. So this, I actually borrowed from one of my buddies because I went to his house the other day and he had this. He bought it at a garage sale. And he knows it's fake. Uh, but let me just show you some, uh, some hints. I mean, if you're buying this from a private party and you're meeting them somewhere, uh, here's some things that you should look for. So to start off with, for example, a Rolex watch, if it's solid gold, it's gonna be all real gold. The gold is not, gold can tarnish, but gold is not gonna fade. When we look at this watch, closely we can see that it has areas to where the yellow gold has faded and it's turned to this like silver color and even on on the bracelet on the top in some areas if you look closely there's traces of silver coloring here also silver coloring because it's not solid gold and it's not even gold plated they just use like a yellow color painted over a cheap base metal it's not even stainless steel underneath there it's just a cheap uh cheaper metal than stainless steel uh, a rolex crown on a watch like this is going to be solid gold and sure gold tarnishes and also gold does wear out like for you know from many years of touching this it can fade but it's not going to fade to where it turns a different color like silver underneath this is fading because it's just painted and underneath you have a cheap material there. So look for stuff like that. So again, this is supposed to be a Rolex day date, also nicknamed the president. Um, one of the first things I've al I always say when you examine a watch, the, the, first, uh, the first thing you should do is just use some common sense, get a kind of a feel for the watch. Does it feel like this is Rolex quality or does it feel cheap you know even like the links for example uh the way it feels like a real rolex is going to be super smooth it's not it's not so noisy like this um when you're winding the watch for example let's wind it let's let's see how it it feels and how it sounds it's really loud Rolex watches too, doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be super quiet, but they're usually smoother than this. Let's try to change the time. See how the date flips over. Check the quick set. It changes good, but it feels really rough. So like a real Rolex is gonna be nice and smooth. It's not gonna feel rough. And it's also, it's, it's gonna be quiet. Like the fake watches are super loud. Like when the disc changes over, it's very loud. Um, so again, from the outside, these are some uh, uh, signs that, that it's fake. And again, one of the main things is just this fading. You know, it's okay for gold to tarnish, but it's not gonna fade from yellow to white. All right, so we have some questions that we've been getting through our YouTube channel, and um, I'm always reading your comments. If you have any questions that you'd like us to answer for you, please put them down in the comments. So let's get into it.
here's a question that I got recently from one of our viewers. He asked, if you had a thousand dollars to invest, what would you invest in as far as watches go? So notice that his question was to invest. So he's not, I'd always say, you know, buy a watch that you like, that you can enjoy. But if you have a thousand dollar and you want to invest, I'm going to tell you a hundred percent of the time, spend it on a vintage Omega. Over the years, Omega has proven to be one of the best watches as far as resale value. Here's one Omega that we have. It's a 1954 Seamaster with the tropical dial. So stuff like this you can't go wrong with. Um, Omega is a great watch. It keeps better time than Rolex. They have a service life of 140 years. Basically what that pretty much means is that you can service this watch for at least 140 years. And parts are still around for these vintage Omegas. A lot of watchmakers have them. We have them. We can still work on them. Um, so accuracy, value-wise, whenever you want to sell an Omega, it's easy to sell anywhere online or you go to any shop. Everybody knows Omega. So if you want to invest $1,000 or less into a watch, buy a vintage Omega. I'm sold on those. Anyone from like the 1950s, 60s, 70s, great watches. Okay, so next question. How do I know when it's time to service a watch? That's a good question. Like some watch dealers would just say, uh, just wait until your watch stops. And you can do that. And I would say do that for lower end watches because, you know, when it stops, then you can put the money into it to service it. And like, for example, some watches, they might only be 200, worth 200, 300 bucks. Okay. So maybe a service cost will be $150 and it seems like it's not worth it. But if you spend $150 and then you can get 10 to 20 years of usage out of that watch, then it's worth it. Now, most watchmakers will recommend servicing a watch every three to five years, you know, for optimal performance. And if it's a watch that you're using daily and it's a watch that has a lot of value and you don't want the parts to wear out, service it regularly every three to five years now let's say you just bought a watch because i think the question here was mainly like i just bought a watch off of ebay how do i know when i should service it and some people just put it on the timing machine and they they uh, check the amplitude of the balance wheel and if the amplitude is too low then you know it doesn't necessarily mean that the watch needs service but um it's a tough question to answer i mean you can go into to have a watchmaker examine it to see if it's dirty inside, to see if it has any rust buildup or anything like that, or if it has debris inside. But obviously, if you're putting it on your timing machine and the accuracy is off and the amplitude is, is bad, you know, maybe it's time to service it. And if you want to spend the money, service it. If not, you know, like some watch dealers say, hey, wait until it stops completely. I wouldn't say that, especially if you're, you know, paying $5,000 or more for a watch. Maintain it properly like you do a car, like you do a oil change on the car regularly do the same for your watch all right so next question uh will you ever do a day in the life at watch shows so recently we just did three watch shows back to back to back my videographer wasn't there with us unfortunately so i i messed up the the microphone the camera so we recorded a lot but nothing came out good so uh hopefully in the future like i used to do over 30 watch trade shows per year but since I was robbed the last couple of years, I've only done about six watch shows per year. Uh, hopefully I can get back into the swing of things and, you know, do at least like 25 to 30 watch shows a year. I really do enjoy doing the watch shows and hopefully in the future we can bring some more content from the watch shows. But also, you know, a lot of people are uncomfortable filming there. And this is one issue, too, that kind of opened things up, you know, in the last few years filming at the watch shows. It has kind of opened things up for the whole world to see what's going on at these trade shows. And while it's very cool, it's actually become very dangerous because a lot of people, you know, and I'm talking about like bad people, you know, that didn't know like some watches are worth that much. Well, now they know. So everything's kind of out there and exposed. So in the future, we'll try to film at watch shows and uh, show more of that content because it's, it's cool to see. Uh, I enjoy it myself watching other YouTubers and stuff like that. Uh, but it's also we got to protect, you know, ourselves and other people as well. So we try to do that. We, it's got to be a balance. All right. So in 2021, I was leaving an IWJG watch trade show 
I was in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, at the Tropicana Casino. Uh, ordered a new Uber vehicle. I got into the vehicle. I was surrounded by two small SUVs. Out of these two SUVs, four guys got out. They were all wearing black. They had black gloves, black ski masks. They had bulletproof vests. They, were, they had weapons on them. Uh, they popped the tires of the vehicle that I was in. They broke the window of the driver's uh, of the driver's window. They broke my window in the back. One guy was holding the driver in at gunpoint. Another guy was holding me in at gunpoint. He didn't point the gun to my head, but he had it drawn out. They were yelling, screaming, cussing. They took everything I had on me. I usually don't carry stuff on me when I go to shows or when I come back, but it just so happened that um, I was at this trade show and I wanted to leave early, so I booked to an earlier flight. And because I did that, I instead of shipping everything back with Malka Amit like I usually do, I just took everything with me. And you know, it could have been something internally like a setup, but I these persons that robbed me that day, they were pretty much just waiting for any dealer that was an easy target, and that day it just happened to be me. So I got hit pretty hard. I lost over $600,000 worth of stuff that I had inventoried. Um, uh, there was other stuff that wasn't inventoried, cash, some personal items. I had been there for a few days. This uh, I was doing actually two shows. Since then, I've only recovered $9,400 from my insurance company. I don't want to get into more details because legal stuff, uh, you know, we're basically trying to recover that. It's been over two years. And just recently, I heard from my lawyers that it might be about 15 months until we go to court. So, uh, next question. <laughs> All right, so here's Breitling. Company has been around a long time. And uh, here's one of my frustrations with Breitling. It's like, you're paying 10, 10 grand for a watch, okay? And they give you this little box here that looks like more of a service pouch that other companies give you for free when you send the watch for servicing look at the interior how are you supposed to display this watch like a lot of the watches we have on display they have you know a nice box that you could display them in but breitling does this and my frustration is now that it's not that they're i don't know what they're trying to accomplish but i'll tell you what they're trying to accomplish they're just being cheap about it because Breitling also is one of the most expensive brands after after sales service. If you send it in to service it, they'll come up with all kinds of excuses to replace the crown, the, the, the tube, the crystal, the back, the pushers, whatever. You know, most Breitlings that I haven't had parts for and I had to send a Breitling, they came back with an estimate of around $3,000 to $3,500. That is my experience with Breitling. And I've sent them a lot of watches over the years because for example, like the inner bezel here was scratched or something like that and I don't have those parts. So I sent to them and they give me these ridiculous prices. So for me, I think this is a brand, I mean, I love Breitling and all, but I think it's just a brand that is just, it just shows how much they're into making money off of people like a killing you know they get cheap with their packaging when you send something to service they want to kill you on it it's just that that's ridiculous to me that so that's my rant about Breitling so let's open it up let's look between the lugs and you should always like if you're buying a watch like this you should meet um, the seller at a watch shop to where they can take the band off, they can open the back, and uh, see how rough it is even when taking this off. It shouldn't be like so, so difficult. These spring bars on a Rolex President, they're gonna be solid gold. That's not to say that over the years they can be changed and people sometimes put stainless steel uh, spring bars. This bracelet has a number here. It's 18239. Take that number and go on Google and just put Rolex bracelet 18239. Let's see what it brings up. Does it even bring up any Rolex bracelets like that? These are not Rolex bracelets 18239. This is 
18239 is a reference number for a Rolex day date president in white gold. So that right there is a red flag. Is why am I not finding a bracelet that has 18239 marked on there? Because again, it's a reference number for an actual Rolex president in white gold. So they took that reference number and stamped it on the band as if that was the model number of the band. Now, let's look between the lugs. The serial number on here, it looks like it's a six digit serial number, but it starts with the letter X. So when they started adding letter before the serial number, that was in 1987. And by that time, they were already at the seven digits. So these counterfeiters here forgot to put another digit because, again, they didn't use a letter in front of the serial until 1987, roughly. So it's missing, it's missing one digit. But also, just looking at this, what does this say right there? It says stainless steel. Now, how is this stainless steel when this is supposed to be a Rolex President 18K gold? It shouldn't say that. On stainless steel Rolexes, it says that. But see, these counterfeiters, so this is a bad copy, but these counterfeiters were so stupid that they took something that they saw on a Rolex stamp between all their uh, stainless steel models, and they put this on a model that's supposed to be 18 karat gold. And another thing is that when Rolex engraves this uh, serial number and the writing, it's usually very deep. This right here, it, it looks like it's, it's just barely touched on the surface, like just like a stamping or a, or a quick print on there. So that's another clue right there. But just, you know, common sense. I mean, stainless steel on an 18K gold president. Let's open and look inside. Let's see if the real, the real Rolex tool it fits on here. Let's open and see what's inside. And here you have it. Inside is just, again, this is a super, super poor fake watch. Like, just look at the quality of this. It's, it's garbage, you know. This is just a Chinese garbage movement. And they have a plastic retainer around. I mean, Rolex doesn't use that. And look how it sounds. I'm going to put it close to my mic. It sounds cheap because it is cheap. When, you're, when I'm looking at, at some of these engravings inside, they engrave them so poorly that when you hold them into different lighting conditions, it's like by doing these engravings, they almost like bent the case. And this is super cheap material. I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, it's super cheap. I mean, there's just a lot of things wrong with this watch. But yeah, don't support that industry. I know I have some clients and some of them are my, I have, you know, they've become my friends, but you know, they, they will say, hey, well, I can't afford the real thing. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna pay two, 300 bucks for, for a fake one just because I enjoyed the look and stuff like that. Um, but the only problem with that is, and I get it that they're not trying to cheat anybody, they're not trying to resell it as a real thing, but the only problem with that is that when it ever ends up in somebody else's hands and somebody else will try to do something crooked with it, or like what happens all the time is like people find these in storage units or a family member passes away and then uh, there are people that just don't know and they come and they ask, but then there are people that are just dishonest and they try to pass these on as being real, whether you know it's a solid gold one or stainless steel. So don't support that industry. I mean, for me, we pay zero dollars for these. These are worth nothing to us. So I'm gonna give this back to my buddy because it belongs to him. He can do whatever he wants with it. Obviously it's his, but don't support that industry at all. That looks very good too. Yeah, right, it gives it a, a nice, uh... Uh, nice you can dress it up or dress it down. I mean this yeah. one's more, more like being more dress up the brown one 
Yeah. Well, again, personal preference. Like I, I wear a lot of blue. Mm -hmm. I wear blue suits, and I always wear brown shoes, brown belt. Yeah, I would I wear think, it to church. And yeah. Stuff, you know, that's probably what I would do for dinner or church. Probably. Yeah. And then this part here. <laughs> This part goes with the, it connects with the brand too. Yeah. And let's see if it'll fit. So pretty much that does fit there and that here is gonna fit 100%. If it goes, to, yeah, it's perfect. Ma a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He, uh, take it outside in the sunlight and see how it looks. Get ready to tackle him if he makes a run for it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What do you think? All right, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go eat like you said. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. I'll leave it out just yeah. in case. If you want it, mm -hmm. I'll leave it out. Okay. Still got a little time. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll okay. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> just wanna quickly show you guys some of the items that we bought this week. We bought quite a few, so I just picked out some random ones to show you. Just a variety of things. We got an older Rolex Explorer uh, with the white polar dial, stainless steel. We got a Datejust two-tone. This is an older reference, 1601, with the non-quick set date. We also had this come in a couple days ago, which is an Omega Seamaster 300 Diver, the 007 edition. I love this watch. I've had it before. It's been a while since we got it. And this is cool that it comes with all the original box and papers, uh, box warranty cards. Still has the, the hang tag. And the retail was 9,200. I think the retail on these now went up to 10,000. The retail prices on most Omega watches has gone up. Uh, also, I don't know if we showed this. We've had it for, yeah, I think we did show it in our last episode, but it's a Rolex Submariner 1680. It has a nice creamy patina. I was wearing this about two weeks ago, maybe. So we've had it for about two weeks in our store. It's for sale. All of these watches are for sale. Some of them, we got to process them and stuff like that. Uh, this is a, an older Tag Heuer Monaco with the plastic crystal. Still a nice cool chronograph for probably under $2,000. But something that we don't buy too often, but it's just a modern uh, desk clock made by Chopard. Swiss made movement. They use a movement inside like for a wristwatch. I mean, this is you know, pretty substantial size desk clock, but the movements that they use inside are small movements like on a wristwatch, but it was really cool. It comes with the original box and pouch and booklet uh, from a customer that contacted us. We bought this, he found us on, uh, through YouTube. He got a hold of us. We got this solid gold, uh, 10K solid gold vintage Lord Elgin automatic. I think we paid 200 or 250 for this, so not not bad. Uh, we got a stainless steel Tag Heuer Aqua Racer quartz, and I think we paid 550 or 650 for this. I got to check our receipts, but that's why we got to process everything when it comes in because we buy a lot of stuff and then we got to process it, inventory it, know what we paid for it, so we can price it accordingly. I bought another Nomos. I like these Nomos watches. Although recently they've kind of lost popularity within the last year or so. I don't know why, but they're still very nice and very well-made watches. And this is a manual wind one. Nice unisex watch. It's not very big in size. I think it's a 39 millimeter. And uh, what else we got? <laughs> Oh, look at this box. Really nice. It's just a Citizen watch, but it's really cool. It's an automatic. Citizen automatic diving watch. 
titanium case and bracelet. Pretty cool. I don't buy these brand new anymore even though I'm an AD because I just don't make money with them. But pre-owned, I still buy them. I still like them. I still wear them. I still enjoy them. I'm not against buying. So as you can see, we buy a variety of things. Uh, also, we got this very nice Cartier Pasha. It's the newer model, and it comes complete with box, papers. It's got the extra strap. So this is going to be available for sale. So we got quite a few, and we got more than this. Quite a few watches that we purchased this week. So I like how some watch brands like Cartier, for example, here's this beauty that we bought this week. I like how they, they give you a nice box. Uh, sometimes they give you an extra strap, you know, with the watch. You have a tool for changing the strap over and nice pouch to store it in. But like I, I was ranting earlier about a Breitling. Breitling is one of the companies that nowadays they, you buy a brand new watch and they don't give you much to go with it. Even Rolex, you know, they give you a box booklet card. Sometimes they don't even give you the white hang tag anymore that you pay for it. Um, but it's, it's cool. Some companies still have a nice presentation to them. And that's like part of a selling point, I think, for a watch that when you have this nice box, maybe extra strap, it's a, it's really cool to have. But again, the companies that are getting away from doing that, I don't like that. Like, and Breitling's one of them. You know, they're, I think a few years ago, they came out with this thing that, oh, you know, they're trying to save the planet or stuff like that. That's just a bunch of baloney to me. I just look at them becoming more and more cheap, trying to save money, you know. But uh, look, for example, another Omega we have here. It's just, it's a nice presentation. Yeah, you get a nice outer box, a, a good quality wooden box. You got a booklet, you got the cards and stuff like that. It's, it's just a nicer presentation. Hey, what's going on? Uh, what do you want polished on it? There's just some scratching on the sides of the, um, Buc the clasp. Clasp, okay. Yeah, come on by. I'll take care of you, man. All right, Do you need anything? Water? Food? Oh, no. I'm okay. Thank you, though. Okay, see you. Bye. Oh, you got to get it in the right light to get the cap, get the beauty of the dial with the green sapphire crystal, mm -hmm. Z blue, Rolex Melgas. We're gonna need to do a polish on this. Yeah, we can make it like new. Okay. 